another beautiful day and we give God all the praise to have another day. Giving him all the glory. You know what? We don't associate any partners with the Most High in this house. We give him his oneness, okay? Christianity has no logic. It has no logic. And Christianity only has an emotional high, okay? But the thrill is gone. The charisma is wearing off and people are coming to their senses. And there are billions of Christians who do not know that God Almighty never once said with his own mouth to any prophet, Jesus is going to die for your sins verbatim. And I realize a lot of Christians do not know what verbatim is means somebody please tell me what does verbatim mean word for word word for word okay now your bible says don't lie so if you're going to say it says verbatim and then try to give me a bible interpretation of isaiah 53 or genesis 3 15 that is what you call lying all right now we're going to pick up with y'all boy all right, Raekwon, let's get it. This is chapter one. Genesis chapter one. All right. And let's go to Genesis chapter one, verse 26, right? You, let me know when you're there. Bro, I'm waiting on you, man. Go ahead. God said, let us, right? If God's creating the heaven and earth. Man was not formed yet. Nothing was, men did not form or anything. God said, let us. So is God talking to himself when he said us? Man, man, That's because man, your Bible earth. knowledge is poor. God gives himself a royal we. Because you're talking, look, can I talk, man? Let me talk to you. Ask me a question and then you want to answer it. Okay? That is a royal we. Just like the judge says, we the church. He's not talking about the people. He's talking about himself. God speaks and gives himself a royal we. He speaks the same way like that in the Quran. It's called a plural of respect. The Quran is called All right, so now we got to go over a plural of respect. Now, amazingly, Arabic Christians... They do not have any issues with the phrase, let us. Now, let's get that in Genesis 1, 26. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. All right, so it used the term let us. Okay, so now when we look at the, that scripture, it says let us make men, okay? But if you keep reading, I want you to start that over because this is what people fail to see. Although it says let us make men, let's read that again. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Keep so, going. So God created man in his own image. So God created man. Okay, did it say, so we created man? It said God created man. It was given God the plural of respect. Now, going back to what I was saying about Arabic Christians, they don't have no problem with that because they understand the plural of respect. And they're Christians. They're not Muslims. They understand that although God is one, when we speak of him in certain scriptures, it's speaking of him in plural. All right. Now I'm going to read something else. It says the plural biblical hebrew okay the plural of majesticus okay it goes like this the term majestic plural 
refers to the use of a plural word to refer honorifically to a single person or entity. It is also called the plural of respect. The honorific plural. The plural of excellence. Or the plural of intensity. In the Hebrew Bible, such plural forms are commonly used when referring to the God of Israel. All right. Now, in Malachi 1 6, I want someone to get that. And we know this is the name that is. Adonai, but when we look at it, it is Adamani. All right, somebody get that. This is the book of Malachi, chapter 1, verse 6. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you. All right, now if you literally look that up in Hebrew, that is actually speaking of plural. Like masters. But it's actually talking about one God. All right. And this is also seen in Genesis chapter 24. So that is what we call a plural of respect. When we say God's name, Eloi, or some pronounce it Eli. All right. In Genesis, it's Elohim. And that I am on the end of Elohim is giving him the plural of respect. This is seen in the court system when the judge stands up and he says, we the court. Okay, he's not talking about the court. He's speaking of himself. This is also seen in the singular form. When I say you are beautiful, that's giving you the plural of respect. Because I should be saying you is beautiful. But no, I'm giving you that plural of respect. This is what we call the royal we. All right, so now we're going to get back to this debate. I don't care about the garage. Okay, well then, well then screw you, okay? But you asking me, okay? And it says us because it's speaking of a royal respect. Okay, we do the same thing. We don't because look at it. If you look at it, have you studied it? Have you ever looked at Elohim? The I am on the ending of Elohim in Genesis 1 is the plural of respect. It's just like God's name is Elah. But when you give him the plural of respect, Elohim the creator, that is a plural of respect. It's not talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what understudied men do all the time. And Christians push that narrative all the time. When we uh, read that, people automatically be like, people automatically be like, that is talking about the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. No, it don't say that. It says, let us, and then it says, and God created man. In his own image, it went right back to the singular. It was just, it was just giving him a plural of respect. Now let's keep going. Listen to yourself, brother. God will not say, "Let us make man in our." He used two different plural words. That's how, dude. That's how. That's how he talks. That's how he talks. He talking to himself. I mean, bro, yourself, bro, we can, bro, we can agree to disagree. Or you can try to force Christianity because it's not working. I'm not converting. I'm not converting. I'm not trying to have a Bible study with you. I'm not trying to have a Bible study with you, bro. I'm just trying to ask you a question to see if you would be honest. Is there a scripture in the entire Old Testament where God is saying, I will send Jesus to die for your sins? Why can't you just be honest? Why you gotta lie? I, I, I told you from the jump. He never said no blatant words like that. All right. He signs and he gave and he said said prophets and he said there will be a savior and he said it is a sign. I will send you a sign. Does he, he call himself a savior? Uh, huh? Don't he call himself a savior? 
Yeah, he's God. Jesus, this is what I'm saying. No, no, I'm talking about this. God called himself a savior. God is a savior. The Bible says God is a savior. He God calls himself a savior. A savior. Why? Which is why Jesus is God and he came down. You know, uh, I disagree. I disagree. So you don't so you don't have this this the strongest scripture. What's the strongest scripture? Okay, I'm giving you an opportunity. What's the strongest scripture you have where it's talking about God sending Jesus to die for your sins? What's the strongest scripture you can pull? When he said, uh, when he, bro, it, all scriptures hold weight, right? All scriptures hold weight. So I'm not going to... So the Quran holds weight? Huh? The Book of Mormon holds weight? They Christian? Mormon, Mormon is called teaching. Mormon is they Christian. They believe Jesus died for their sins too. Listen. You say all the scripture. Okay, so what is he talking about? This is how you're not well knowledge. This all means all, and that's all all can mean. You're saying all. Paul says all. He said there's nothing unclean. He says circumcision is nothing. He said you can eat food, sacrifice to idols. He called himself the father. What are you talking about? Now can I speak? You're bringing Mormonism into this. Mormons you said all scripture is from God. Mormons is not Christians. Mormons believe in Joseph Smith. No, Mormons is considered Christianity. But type it in. Mormon is Christianity. Mormons is not Christianity. I sit here and debated with Mormons. The reason why Mormons is not Christianity is because if you go to beliefs, Mormons consider themselves if you Christians. Go to the book of Moroni in the Mormons book, if you go to Moroni, Mormons teaches that kids are incapable of sin. Where in the Bible does it say you are incapable okay, of sin? Okay, 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 whatever, whatever. All right, man, just, just keep going, man. Just keep going. What's your strongest scripture? Again, Mormon is not true Christianity. Mormons believe in Joseph Smith, revelation that they got from Joseph Smith with some gold BS tablets just because they pull scriptures out of the Bible to try to match up what they're saying doesn't mean it's Christianity. Just like Muslims. They pull, they, the Muslims even say, oh, believe in the Bible, in their own book, in their own Quran, they said to believe into the, in the Bible and the Bible is true. But then when you pull scriptures out of the Bible to go and... He just lied. Now, in the Quran, it tells us to read the previous scriptures and the Gospels. But it don't say, believe the Bible, the Bible is true. He adding that. He adding that. A lot of men, what they do is they cherry pick. Cherry pick is... You don't read the Quran, but you find little scriptures here and there, and you pull them out. You don't fully read it. You just pull a few scriptures out and debate about it. Also, I'm going to tell you something else. A lot of Christians cherry pick their own Bibles because they haven't even fully read it. <laughs> and so they just pull pieces here and there. All right. So I just wanted to make sure. Um, Y'all understood what he just said was a lie. There's no verse in the Quran that says, read the Bible, it is true. No. In the Bible, it tells you that if you add to the word, God will add a plague to your life. If you take away from the word, God will take your name out of the book of life. So in the Bible... It gives you an opportunity to corrupt it. In the Quran, there's no scriptures like that. The Quran basically just says God is the guardian of it to guard it from corruption. So it's promising you that ain't nobody going to mess with it. In the Bible, it's basically saying, hey, if you mess with this book, you'll be punished. All right. Two different things. I'm going to keep going. Any of their teachings, what they say. The Bible is corrupt. Nah, bro. 
No, 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 no. You, you, you going around picking on everybody but y'all hypocrite selves, okay? So let's, so let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We're not here to discuss about the Christianity, okay, being the realest religion. Although it is not the fastest growing religion no more. It is not the fastest growing religion on the world, in the planet no more. It used to be. Your fact is, you are told... You are. I'm asking you to find me a, the strongest scripture coming from God Almighty, where He said Jesus is going to die for your sins, and you just want to keep keep going. What you got? Because, because what you are asking, right? You're asking. You're basically asking me to find out point bold, point blank. I mean, point blank and bold, where God says, "Oh." I'm sending a savior. His name is going to be called Jesus. He's coming into the world. So you don't think he's ever done that? Fine. Hold on. Go to first, go to first Kings. Go to First Kings chapter 13. That's what you want me to find, right? Go to First Kings chapter 13. Go to First Kings chapter 13. If you go to First Kings chapter 13, look what it says. Verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. See, I, I get excited when I hear stuff like that. Because if I know it's God speaking. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. So this man was announced 350 years before he was born, okay? And he was just a king of Judah, Josiah. You can read about him. His birth was announced 350 years by name, okay, by the Holy, this, by God Almighty, where did He announce this, Jesus this, going this, to die for your sins? Same as Jesus, His birth was announced. What, by name, born of a virgin. By name, by by He will be born of a virgin. Wasn't He born of a virgin? The prophet had that word "virgin" actually means marriageable age, and that was talking about his son, his wife, Isaiah's wife. The prophet has had a son. Okay, if you look at that story in Isaiah 7 and go to, if you read chapter 8, the prophet Isaiah had a son. Okay, all right, y'all. What I want y'all to do is I want y'all to go to Exodus 4 16. Now, I showed y'all this God made Moses a God to Pharaoh. All right, he made him a God to Pharaoh. He never once said I made Jesus a God to anybody, but he said that for Moses. All right. That was in Exodus chapter seven. Now let's read Exodus 416. This is the book of Exodus chapter four, verse 16. And he shall start. Start at verse 15. This is the book of Exodus chapter four, verse 15. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and thou wilt be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of God. All right, now let's go to verse thirteen, so y'all know who he's talking about. Now I just gave y'all a scripture. Yesterday in the book of Exodus chapter 7 Where God says I've made Moses a God Okay To Pharaoh Now look what else God said Before he even made Moses a God to Pharaoh Guess who Guess who God made Moses a God to Let's go to verse 13 And he said O oh my Lord send I pray thee by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. All right, now, if you study the Bible, I do types and shadows. 
Aaron was a type of Christ, okay? He was a type of Jesus, okay? Aaron was a eloquent speaker, okay? And he was a prophet, okay? Now, keep going. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth, and will teach you what ye shall do. And he shall be thy spokesman unto the people, and he shall be... Even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of a god. He's going to be your prophet, and you are going to be his god. Damn. This is in the Bible. Now, we're going to look at this in another translation. God never said anything like this about Jesus. It's only with the M. It is only with the M. It's only with the man. All right. Now, I'm going to show you all this. This is going to be another translation. This is going to be, uh, let's see. I want to do the ESV version. And I'm going to start at verse 13. But he said, oh, my Lord. Please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people and he shall be your mouth and you, Moses, shall be as a God. Capital G. This is capital G. Look. Damn! He said you're going to be a God to Aaron. He never once said anything like this about Jesus. He said this about Moses. That's why in Deuteronomy 18, it speaks of another prophet. Let's get that real quick. Oh, yeah, I know this. This is crushing Christianity. Christianity is on an emotional high. <laughs> they have nothing but feelings. They don't have no scripture. Okay, now this is going to be Deuteronomy 18, 18, and I want to start at verse 17, and the Lord said unto me, right there, that's the most powerful thing out of everything that I'm about to say next, because this is letting us know that the Lord is speaking. These type of phrases is not mentioned nowhere. In the New Testament. Not even one time. Not even in the book of Revelation. And it says. And the Lord said unto me. They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet. From among their brethren. Now that word brethren. Don't mean the Benny Israel. Okay. That actually means your fellow countrymen. Like unto thee. That's where I get my types and shadows. Okay, right here. He didn't say I'm about to raise up somebody that's going to be their own person. He said, look, Moses, I'm going to raise somebody up that's going to be just like you. And I will put my words in his mouth and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. This is not talking about Jesus. Jesus was born miraculously. Okay. Jesus was supposedly crucified by these Christians. <laughs> Moses and Jesus is two different people. Okay. Totally different. Moses had children. Okay. Moses had a natural death. He actually, the Lord laid him down. Okay, but he died and he was buried. This is not Jesus. 
Okay? Jesus is not the type and shadow of Moses. Okay? Moses was the Deuteronomy 18.18 prophet, okay? The type and shadow of him was the Gentile messenger. That's why he pointed to the moon and it split, okay? A lot of people don't get this. So when you are trying to make a God out of Jesus, you are going against the whole Bible. God never did this with Joshua. He never once made Joshua a God. He made Joshua a servant, but he made Moses a God to Pharaoh and he made Moses a God to Aaron. Now we got to pick back up and we should be finishing today. Because I know y'all ready to be done with this. Let's go. He had a son. Of a virgin. Yeah, he was born of a virgin. He was okay. born of a virgin. But is he announced? Right does, does that say he's going to die for your sins? Look how dumb he sound. Him being announced. He said he will send a savior and he will be born of a virgin. I will show you. Hold on. Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. Let's get that. This is what? Isaiah. Chapter 7, verse 14, right? Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That is not talking about somebody dying for your sins. At all. And Jesus never once was called Emmanuel. <laughs> so where is the scripture I'm asking you that is saying oh, Jesus is going to die for your sins? Just because he wasn't called Emmanuel. But this is besides the point, bro. This is besides the point. Listen, who in history was born of a virgin, from a virgin? But where does it say somebody's going to die for your sins, bro? I, it's like you don't understand. You got all this theology. What you're trying to do, you're trying to play this game that everyone that is against Christianity wants to go and find a path of uh, find point blank words that they know are not there, right? They know those words are not there from the Old Testament, right? Because when you when you quote those words in the New Testament, then you guys go to say, oh, but this person contradicts that person, and this person contradicts that person, right? That's what you guys do. No, bro, I'm just asking you a question. I'm asking you not to lie. Okay? What's the strongest scripture? No, I'm a I ask you what's the strongest scripture you have that talks about Jesus is going to die for your sins. I even opened the opportunity up. Okay? I didn't even say I didn't say what do you have? And he said, drink from for this is my blood for the remissions of sins. From the so I'm so from the entire Bible. The entire Bible, you got to go all the way to Matthew and find something. So God Almighty just said, I ain't got, I ain't. God Almighty said, I ain't. You just told me, you just told me to give you a scripture. Now you're going to say, oh, out of the entire Bible, you just want to go to Matthew? I say, God Almighty. Jesus never once said he is God. He never once said that. Bro. Jesus claims he was God. No, he never once said he was God. Give me the scripture where he says, I am God, worship me. If I sit here, you you were just saying, you were just telling me, right? The same way I told you when God said, let us make man in our image. You were telling me, oh, God was talking and giving himself the praise and this and that. But I'm sitting here telling you that from their time, right? The same thing you told me from their time, right? Jesus said, I am, before Abraham was, I am. Well, you take it once. Okay, all right, all right. Well, then, well, well, this is he who has seen the Father, has, who, no. he who has seen me, has seen the Father, right? That's another one. Man, I, me and the Father are one. If well, you are gone. Are one. If y'all one, then how, did, how is the Father greater than Jesus? If they're one, how is the Father greater? Because Jesus gives glory to the Father. He gives all the glory to the Father. Then they're not one. It's a triumph. No, it's a, bro, it's They're all God. God. They, they recognize themselves in three different so forms. You, right? So in Christianity, you got three gods. It's not three gods. It's one God. 
So when Jesus was on earth, you, they had two gods. They had one on earth and one in heaven. He was the son of and the Holy Spirit. He was God's son on earth and the Holy Spirit. Ain't the Holy Spirit separate from Jesus? Ain't the Holy Ain't the Holy Spirit separate from Jesus? But they are one. They are separate beings, but are one. So you got so a being, a human being, is one person. Okay, so you got three beings. That means you got three gods. Okay, now let me ask you this. Now let me ask you this. Your flesh, your your conscience, and your spirit. Three different things, but it is what? One, right? It's all in the same place. Jesus was on earth. God was in heaven. God was in heaven when Jesus was on earth, bro. It's that simple. Just say you got two gods. You said what? You said what? It's that simple. Just say you have you have two gods. You got more than one God. When Jesus was on earth, God. When Jesus was on earth, didn't they have more than two gods? Didn't they have more than one? Jesus is the word of God. He is He is God. The word of God, which is God, right? When he came down to no, earth. I don't agree with your boy John. I don't agree with your boy John. I don't believe Jesus is God. I believe in what came from the previous scriptures. The Bible says God is God by himself. There's no God beside him. So who was God worshiping when he said, Thy throne, O God? Who was he worshiping in Psalms? The Psalms and the prophets are all scriptures that your mind can't fully break down. He now spoke plainly to Moses. He spoke plainly to Moses. I told you it's one God. I told you one God. Going with it, God worship God, right? But then God listen. Oh, before Abraham was, I am, and he and the father of He was saying before Abraham was God. He wasn't saying that he was God. Okay? And and, and he made that claim when he said, I am. Nobody no. else would make that claim. That's why the Pharisees sought to stone him right then and there. Because they know what that meant. Bro, we're talking about Jesus dying for your sins, and you want to convince the world that Jesus is God. Everybody doesn't believe that. People are waking up. Yeah, okay? People are waking up. Everybody does not believe that Jesus is the Son of God is God. That don't even make but sense. Also don't, nobody, nobody has to believe. Like Those people don't have to believe. Because like he said, there will be few that enter in, but many will go on that, that, that wide path, which leads to destruction. And he is that wide path. That wide path. He said, when y'all call him Lord, what did he say? He said, y'all call him Lord. He said, many will call me Lord, Lord, and I will say, I never knew you because you made him God. You made him God, okay? You want to tell you why he said he never knew them? Because those on his right hand, he said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was sick, you, you, you visited me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And then they will say, oh, Lord, Lord, when have we saw you no. in a prison and, and clothed thee and visited thee? You said, as much as you did it unto one of the least of these, you did it unto me. And unto the left hand, he said, depart from me because they didn't do those things to him. All right, y'all. I want y'all to go to Matthew chapter 7. Because this is where I'm quoting. I'm quoting Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21 through 23. And he's about to pull out his commentary. He wants to show me that he knows scripture. So he is talking about an entirely different scripture. And I just let him keep going. And I let him keep going. And then I eventually show him that I was speaking of another scripture. All right. Now, Matthew chapter seven, verse 21, it says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now, we know this is not speaking of Muslims because Muslims do not call Jesus Lord. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that? No. Okay. You knew that, okay. 
Jesus is not Lord, okay? But the Christians, okay, and all those who associate Jesus with God, Jesus is talking about in that day, he's going to profess to them, verse 23, that he never knew them, all right? Now, this is what I'm talking about, but watch. Let's keep going. We're about done. Right or wrong? Not because not because they didn't say he was not because they said he was God or not, but because they didn't take care of his people. That's why he said, "Depart from me." He's talking about a whole different story. Like I just showed y'all, Matthew seven. He's talking about those who are calling him Lord. But I'm gonna let him be long winded, and I'm gonna let him keep going, and then you'll see eventually. He finds out that I'm talking about another scripture. Okay. All right. Well, well, bro, you can believe Jesus is God. Okay. I don't. Am I right or wrong? Am I right or wrong? What you mean? That context, he was talking about casting out devils, people doing works. And he would profess that he would never, that he never knew them. That was the context. No, 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 no. no. That famous verse, I'll tell you right now, that famous verse. Right? I'll tell you the verse right now where it came from, right? Let me go to it let me go to my King James Bible so I can prove to you where that famous verse, depart from me, I never knew you, came from, right? Now when you go to Matthew Well, if it makes yourself feel happy, go go for it, bro. Go to Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse thirty-four. Let's go there. Or maybe let me know when you're there, bro. I'm there, man. Okay, chapter twenty five. Verse 34, right? The judgment, when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon his throne of glory and before him shall be gathered all all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goat. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on his left. Then the king shall say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then the righteous shall answer, Lord, Lord, when saw thee hungry, fed, you know, thirsty, and gave thee drink? And a stranger, then he said, Oh, when you... Uh, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Dearly I say unto you, and as much as ye have done it unto one of these, the least of one of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then he shall say unto the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Right? That's not the scripture I was quoting. It was Matthew 7, 21 through 23. When he said, I will deny them who will also deny me in front of men, I will also deny in front of my father. That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. When he said, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. I told you that, but you long-winded. You love talking. When was the only time they said, Lord, Lord? I just showed you the only time when they said, Lord, Lord, in chapter 25. No, trying to prove to me, he was trying to prove to me that the famous passage was where you went, and you're wrong. I was in Matthew chapter 7. Okay? Okay. Now, back to what I was saying. When else were they saying to him, Lord, Lord, which is in judgment? Are you not? Do you? <laughs> he look at him. He don't know the Bible. I told him like four or five times. I'm in mean, Matthew chapter seven. He thinks it only said that one time in Matthew chapter twenty-five. And I'm in Matthew chapter seven, and it's saying not everyone has said unto me, Lord, Lord. All right. So. This is where we we about to really about to be done right now. We about to be done because he gonna get a little disrespectful. It is gonna be done. Listening, bro, is your head 
is your head blown? You, this is the judgment I was speaking to you when they were saying. Either way, you want to keep running your damn mouth because you can't find nothing in the Old Testament where God is saying he's going to send Jesus to die for your sins. So you want to have a Bible study. I don't want to have a Bible study with you. I really don't. It's not a Bible study. You're never going to find that with no Christian with your hands, but you, the, the thing that you're looking for. You know you're not going to find that, but you think that. I just want to hear, I want everybody to hear your Bible knowledge and how dumb y'all sound. You just said that Jesus said that John the Baptist was, was, was it more than a prophet? That he was talking about himself. When Jesus is clearly talking about John the Baptist, I want people to see where your Bible knowledge is. Okay, that's the purpose. I leave all the comments. I let every comment stay. I don't delete, and I do this so people can see that the blind, if they both, if the blind leaves the blind, y'all gonna fall into a ditch. Okay, I want people to hear how stupid Christianity sounds. So that's why I do these lives. Look at what you're saying. Look at what you're saying, bro. Like you want people to find in bold words, right? God saying, oh, I send Jesus down to die for your sins. That's what you want to find, yes or no? It ain't going to be in there. And once people, and a lot of people don't know that. A lot of people have not studied the Bible to know, okay? Trust me, I've had more subscribers, okay, just from this Jesus did not die for your sins because a lot of people are like, they get a hold of me and they're like, damn, I never knew that God Almighty never said that word for word. Okay, a lot of people actually believe that God did say that word for word. So when you, we do these lives, they get to see that. Damn, all they can do is run to Isaiah. All they can do is run to Genesis three fifteen. Okay, they created the universe. No, Paul. Paul said God created everything through Jesus. He did. No, the Bible says that God is the creator, not Jesus. God is the creator. God. The Bible says God created everything alone. It no says he created everything by Jesus. Paul pushed that line. Paul pushed that line. God, Jesus is the word of God in the beginning. All you got is your boy John, bro. All you got is Joy John. All you have is Joy John. All you have is the greatest forgery. Okay? That's all you have. Okay? In Psalms, God speaking to God. But when I quote you that in Psalms, you know what you go ahead and it do. don't say Jesus. It don't say Jesus. It don't say Messiah. It don't say Son of God. So who else would God be calling a God? The only person he could be calling God is himself. If he didn't want to mislead you. So God is talking to himself now. God is the only God, bro. He's not separated. I, I'm asking, is God talking to himself? Is your God that stupid? Uh, listen, listen, himself? look at you. You're forcing Christianity. I don't want no part of your conversation. I'm done. I'm done. You know what? I'm going to tell you about this witchcraft spirit in Christianity. They try to make you. They try to make Am I forcing Islam on you? No, I'm not forcing anything on you. But here you are. You're still trying to have a lecture on my podcast system. You're Muslim? You're still trying to force this stuff on me. Uh, you're, you're a Muslim, bro? You're still trying to force this stuff on me. I, I don't want anything. You're a Muslim? I don't want anything to do with your Bible study. I okay? You, you lost me. You lost me when you said that Jesus called himself more than a prophet. <laughs> you lost me when you was talking about Timothy. You lost me when you was talking about Timothy in the in the Gospels. Okay? I know. How, why don't you tell me this? How long have you been studying? Because it's showing. How long have you been studying? How long have you been studying the Bible? Be honest. I'm asking, are you a Muslim? I'm asking you a question, man. You, I'm hosting. Where's your respect as a Christian? I'm hosting. I'll let you talk majority of the whole first hour. I'll let you give a whole Bible lecture. And I'm asking you a question. How long have you been studying? I've been studying for seven, six months now. Nah, bro, you is not going to make it. All right, bro, I got to go. I got to go. So you, you got six months of studying, and you really feel like you is at a place to debate with people. Yeah. 
All right, man, I'll pass. I'm I'm good. I, I'm I'm done, bro. I'm done. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for answering. Okay, I appreciate you taking the call. I appreciate you jumping on. I appreciate you putting it all out. I see that we both have disagreed. We have disagreements. Yeah, I came to Islam from the Bible. I've been studying. I've been, let, 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 let me talk. Let me talk. Don't be so long. Don't be so long winded. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm just asking. I just want to ask a question, bro. Don't cut me off. Are you cool when your prophet marrying and having sex with? Minors? That's in the Quran? Like, is that in the, if you can show me that in the Quran, show me that in the Quran. Where your prophet had sex with nine year olds with Aisha? Show me that in the Quran. Where is that in the Quran? I'll show it to you right now. I'll show it to you. In the Quran. In the Quran, little boy. In the Quran. It's not in the damn Quran. It's not in there. You don't study. God promised to preserve the Quran. Not the hate deeps. Okay? You don't have any scripture like that. And show me, okay, show me the laws of marriage in the Bible. What's the law of marriage in the Bible? How old you got to be? How old is Jesus' mother? Since you're so smart. Uh, the Bible doesn't mention how old she was. How old was he? How old? If you if you if you was to study it, there's history okay, on it. There's right? history on it. Right? Mary had to go. If just look it up, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You go by the Quran, right? And even in your Quran, it says Jesus, the Messiah, will we come down and judge now. the world. Right? Am I right or am I wrong? He's got to bring up this mess so everybody believes this is God. He's going to destroy the cross. Listen, listen to this. Listen to this. If Jesus is going to come down in your Quran and judge the world, only God can judge. Nah, bro, you gone, bro. You got six months in. You so wet behind the ears, man. It's like, bro, it's like you spiritually. It's like you. No, that's not God. Paul said, Paul said that you can judge. Read your Bible. Paul says that the Christians can judge. Paul says that the Christians can judge. You can judge righteous judgment. Solomon was a judge. Was he God? Was Solomon a God? He was a judge. You can judge. We have a whole book called Judges. There's a woman named Deborah who was a judge. Listen, listen. Jesus in your book is judging the world. He's coming down as He's cleaning up the mess of everybody believing in the cross. He's going to destroy the cross. Now listen. Now listen. Jesus is coming down from your book to judge the world, but in your book, only God can judge. You lost. You lost. You lost, man. I, I don't receive. I don't receive that. I don't receive that. You. You are very understudied. No. You don't. No. No. You. Bro, look. Look at you. You still trying to force me. Bro, you ain't no Christopher Columbus. Why you want Christopher? You want Christopher Columbus? You trying to force? You ain't Christopher Columbus forcing Christianity on the Indians. Bro, you just like Christopher Columbus. You're like, yeah, um, yeah, I can mute you. You know that. You know I can mute you. All right? You need to fill out. your prophet's parents? Bro, I can mute you. I can mute I'm you. Thinking, where are your prophet's parents? Why, why are you going on the whole other time? You sad you lost? You sad? You sad? No, I'm not sad. I'm not. I'm, I'm not. not I think bro, your prophet's parents. Bro, if you were studied, I would do a debate with you on that. Okay, because I can literally cut you up on that. But the topic is Jesus did not die for your sins. Okay? You just like a boxer giving a person a low blow. You so worried about you so worried about who who somebody's screwing. That's how messed up your mind is. You worried about who having sex with who and we're talking about Jesus dying for your sins. Bro, I'm gonna let you go. I'm done, bro. I'm done. When you kiss a black stone, when Isaiah kiss a stone, then Isaiah kiss a stone, and the sin was right away. Will come to life. Then, then, listen, dumbass. You get down on your knees. Bro, bro. You, you know what? You can cut off. Stone liquor. You, you, bro. I had to let the dude go. He got in his feelings and started acting like a little girl because he lost. He got. All right, y'all. We done. So now y'all see. Okay, the the way people are 
let's say we in a fight and we in a fight and I'm kicking your ass. I'm beating you up. All right. And then you're like, damn, I got to grab something. I got to I got to do something. OK. And you think about it in a boxing ring. OK. People fight. What are you not supposed to do in a fight? If you are two men and y'all boxing, what is illegal? Let's see if who knows. What's illegal? Get a punch in the balls. Yeah! You being like a girl punching somebody in the balls because you lost the fight. Now you worried about who is this man having sex with. We ain't even talking about that. We talking about how Jesus didn't die for your sins. And I respect Jesus as the Messiah. So what would I look like trying to dog Jesus out? Okay, I'm not finna fight like that with you. Bruh lost. And if he was studied up, I can do a debate on whatever topic he wanted to get on. Okay, but he lost and he wanted to be a sore loser. So with that being said, we went way past our time, but I wanted to finish this broadcast and and I'm going to open the floor up for any closing comments before we go into our next study in the book of Jasher. Who wants to say something? You just sounded confused. I agree with you. I agree with you. He did. He was all over the place. He was all over the place because, for one, he was like, yeah, you're different from those guys. You're a good person. Yeah, yeah, all this stuff. And then he changed the moment he was trying to force Christianity on me. And I'm like, no, no, let's stay on the topic. And he just wanted to believe that Jesus is God, but... He didn't even want to believe Jesus is his brother when the Bible says it. He didn't even want to believe that he was a Christian when the Bible says they're Christians. So he was confused. And now y'all know that if you get in a debate with someone, you need to know what you're talking about or pass or try to set up someone who you know that can debate. All right. Now. It's about that time to get some blood on my sword. No, no, it's about that time getting to work. Is y'all down? Is y'all ready? Yes. Yes. All right, let's go.